So what I want to talk about today is arrow weight for hunting and not necessarily with the goal of trying to tell you guys what arrow weight you should shoot, but more so to just kind of explain the results of some testing that I've done, just to try and see where my bow is most efficient, what kind of arrows tend to maximize the kinetic energy, maximize the momentum, and just kind of explain those results and what they mean. I've got this graph all printed off. I got the raw data for the arrows that I shot. Basically, I shot arrows from on the light end, 379 grains, all the way up to 1100 grains on the heavy end and just kind of incrementally went up uh, pretty much when I would need to jump up an arrow spine, I would shoot it with a really light point weight to get kind of that next level up and then just kind of add point weight until I was at the point where I needed to jump up another arrow spine. As you're on the lighter side of things, basically each time you add additional weight to the arrow, you get a, a pretty large drop in speed that accompanies it. But as you get further and further down along that range, adding point weight or adding, I guess, overall mass doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference in terms of your speed. So basically, if you look at what happened between 406 grains and 506 grains, I lost 30 feet per second, making that increase in weight. But on the other end of the spectrum, you look at my last two data points, I went from 1,043 grains to 1,163 grains. So I added 120 grains there and I dropped less than 10 feet per second, making that jump. So definitely as you get more and more weight, it seems like you have less and less of a negative impact in terms of your speed. So that kind of explains at least the speed portion of it. On the lighter side of things, you get a more steep drop in speed as you add arrow weight and as you continue to go, it kind of flattens out. If I just kind of eyeball the graph, it makes it look as if I get to a point where maybe around 150 feet per second or so is kind of the spot where it looks like that graph, if it continued to go on, would kind of flatten out meaning I would expect that if I continue to go heavier and heavier and heavier, I'd probably get values that were always you know, very close to 150 feet per second or so. And eventually I'm sure there's a point where it starts to drop off again as the bow loses efficiency. But as we look into the kinetic energy graph, you'll see that at least at this test and the levels I went to, I never really approached the point where my bow was most efficient. If I look at just kind of each incremental gain in the kinetic energy, you're seeing just fractions of a percent of increase each time that I increase the arrow weight. And if you look at the overall beginning versus the end point, there's about a 6% increase. The lightest arrow, I was at 73.3 kinetic energy, and on the heaviest arrow, 77.9. So if you're changing arrow weights between, you know, 500 grains, and you wanna try 550, you're, you're talking fractions of a percent in terms of your increase in kinetic energy. Now this, of course, is only done with one bow. From the other guys that I've talked to who have done a similar type of test, where they've gone through this whole scale, they tend to notice similar things that with these modern compound bows, they just keep getting more and more efficient through the normal ranges of arrows that you would potentially shoot as a, a typical hunting setup. Um, and eventually I'm sure you do hit a point where that kinetic energy flattens out and starts to go back down again. But you can see that at least with the scale that I've done, you're still increasing your efficiency even at 1160 grains with a 70 pound compound. Now let's look at the third graph, which is the momentum. And when we look at our momentum graph, it's almost a linear increase throughout the entire scale. And it's a lot more dramatic of an increase than the kinetic energy was. So for that kinetic energy, we saw an increase of 6% across the entire scale. For momentum, it was 80%. It almost doubled. From the lightest arrow to the heaviest arrow, I jumped from 0.49 in momentum up to 0.89. So a huge increase from the bottom end of the scale to the top end of the scale. Now, when you talk about kinetic energy versus momentum, kinetic energy is good for letting you know kind of how efficient your bow is because when you're drawing your bow back, you're storing energy and it's potential energy at that point. When you shoot your bow, some of that energy is converted into kinetic energy into the arrow. Some of it's lost in sound energy, lost in other inefficiencies in the bow. So you're never really, with a bow gonna get all of your potential energy stored in the cams and the limbs to get put into the arrow. A similar thing can happen on impact. When you hit something, some of that energy can be lost if the arrow oscillates, it can be lost in sound energy, um, and it's not as good of an indicator of your penetration capabilities as your momentum is. When I kind of did this test indoors, what I noticed is that as I got increasingly heavier in the arrow weights, the bow also seemed to get uh, less noisy, it felt less like an explosion when the bow was going off and more just kind of like a transfer. At even the heaviest arrows, 
you can almost feel the bow like pushing back in your hand. Like it just kind of sits, it just feels smoother. The other thing I've noticed over the years is that with a heavier arrow, it tends to be a little bit easier for me to get bigger broadheads to fly well. It's moving slower and that air resistance has less of an impact. One other advantage when you're talking about heavier arrows, just kind of in general, to build a heavier arrow, oftentimes you'll be using a stiffer spine, heavier point, you'll oftentimes need to go to more robust component systems just to kind of beef up that weight and that overall makes your arrow a little bit more durable. So based on all those factors, based on most likely an increase in durability based on how you build it, the rapid increase in momentum, the decrease in bow noise, and the ability to get broadheads to fly a little bit easier. In my opinion, there's only one downside to shooting a heavier arrow, and that's that your trajectory is heavily dependent on your velocity, right? So that's gonna to be totally dependent on what you're trying to do and what you're looking for and what you're hunting. When you're talking to guys out west, I can totally understand how they might say, hey, I need 280, that's a trajectory I'm comfortable with, and if I wanna shoot a heavier arrow, that means I'm gonna to have to shoot a heavier bow to basically push that heavier arrow at a speed that I'm comfortable with. I can totally buy into that kind of an argument. And on the flip side of that, if you're talking about guys who maybe do all their hunting over you know, a feeder or a bait pile or something like that where it's a known distance and it's a short distance, I can't think of one advantage that a light arrow gives you over a heavier arrow because the trajectory is basically removed from the equation. You're shorting, shooting a close distance and a known distance. You can slap on a heavier arrow, a single pin sight, and you're good to go. The only advantage that a light arrow might give you is that it might be a little bit easier or less expensive to walk into any pro shop in America and just get you set up with the run of the mill standard arrow setup. It might cost you a little bit more to get you know, a stiffer spined arrow, better component system, have your point weight, so on and so forth. The next step to taking this testing a little bit further that would take a lot more work than what I basically did here would be to do the same kind of test but sticking the crown graph out at 30 or 40 yards or something like that and seeing what that next level of trajectory looks like. Because as we know, your drag is very heavily dependent on velocity. So when you're shooting a fast setup, it's going to slow down more quickly than a slower arrow would. I did do one quick test with this. I set my chrono up at 30 yards and I took my arrow setup at 537 grains, which was shooting 250 feet per second out of the bow. And at 30 yards, they're shooting about 241, 242. And then I took an arrow set up that was 506 grains. They're shooting 260 feet per second right out of the bow. And at 30 yards, it had dropped already down to like 247, 248. So there was a lot bigger shed and velocity for that slightly lighter arrow than there was for the heavier arrow. And obviously, if you had to go through this entire list, that would take a really long time because you'd have to not only get that arrow set up, but you'd also have to double check the trajectory and make sure you weren't gonna shoot the chronograph. I think they have lab radars and, and things like that that would make that kind of a test a little bit easier to see. But just based on that test too, it makes me wonder if there's not a certain point at a certain distance where that slower, heavier arrow actually moves ahead and starts to main, it maintains its velocity long enough that all of a sudden the, the lighter arrow is now moving slower even though it was faster out of the bow. I don't know at what point that would occur, but it would be interesting to find anyway. The other quick test that I did was with one of my traditional bows. Here is one of my long bows. It's an Acadian Woods, 43 pounds at 28 inches. I'm shooting about a 27 inch draw. So when you're talking about the energy that this bow stores compared to the energy that this bow stores, dramatic difference. This one's way less energy. And when you look at the arrow weights and the arrow speeds and things like that, this is the first arrow setup that I made for it. 500 spine arrow, cut about as short as I can get it. 150 grain tip and 125 grains in the insert system. And this shot shoots very well, bear shaft flies right down the pipe and it shoots 150 feet per second out of the bow and has about a 40 yard point on. Now the other thing that I was testing was what happens if I drop down to a 400 spine and just with this test arrow, I took a 400 spine and with basically about 400 grains up front, it was getting 137 feet per second out of the bow and total arrow weight was 703 grains and my point on distance I don't have it locked in yet but it's shorter than 40 yards so basically what does that mean well when you plug the numbers in arrow setup number one 27.7 foot pounds of kinetic energy and momentum 0 0.37 slugs and with that heavier arrow setup the 703 grains 29.29 foot-pounds of energy, momentum 0.428 slugs. So 
Even though I only lost 13 feet per second between these two arrows, the momentum jumped about 15%. And add on to the fact that this arrow ended up tuning out a little bit longer and it's shooting a little bit slower, that brought my point on distance closer, which at whitetail distances is actually gonna make me a little bit easier to hit what I'm aiming at because my gaps aren't so enormously huge. It makes absolute sense for a light bow setup like this to shoot that heavier arrow because no matter how light I go, it's always gonna be super slow. And if I try and get a light arrow to maximize, you know, shoot 170, 180 feet per second, my momentum is gonna be through the floor. So with that heavier arrow, I'm still shooting a reasonable trajectory that I can live with knowing that I'm limiting myself to to very short shot distances in a tree stand type of scenario. But I got my momentum number up to the point where it's really not even that far behind this bow shooting that lightest arrow, which is really interesting, uh, at least to me to actually plug the numbers and look at how close those two things actually were. Granted, enormous trajectory distance between that arrow out of this bow and that lightest arrow out of this bow. So that's ultimately the thing that is gonna have to be the deciding factor for each individual person in each hunting scenario. Based on all the, you know, the measurables, and just kind of the qualitative, you know, the sound and the feel and everything. There's a lot of advantages to a heavy arrow, but if you're shooting so slow that you're going to end up missing anywhere, getting a poor shot, it's not a good trade-off. So if you can live with the trajectory of a certain speed, a certain weight, then you might as well try and maximize that in terms of your, for your, uh, your arrow weight, at least in my opinion. This little study was kind of eye-opening. It was kind of what I expected, but I didn't expect the jump in momentum to be quite as large as it was. With all this talk about arrow weight and momentum, it's also important to keep in mind that it's not the only thing that impacts your penetration. The ability to have good shot placement, having clean arrow flight, broadhead design, broadhead sharpness, these are all things that also play into how well your arrow is gonna penetrate. And so it's important to remember that even though this video is just focused on arrow weight, one specific thing, there's many things to take into consideration when you're looking at putting together a hunting setup. One other important point, I guess, that I haven't really discussed yet, but bears discussing is the fact that this also is likely gonna depend on what you're going after, right? So if a guy's going after Asiatic Buffalo or something enormous like that, probably a safer bet to go with a really heavy arrow, maximize that momentum, and just get close enough to the, that giant animal that you're not gonna have to worry about the trajectory of hitting it. Whereas on the flip side of things, if you're building an arrow setup for like wild turkeys or something like that, not a lot of momentum needed there. So if you're shooting a high energy compound, you can make the argument that, hey, I'm shooting a really light arrow, really fast trajectory, and I still got plenty of momentum to get the job done. I can definitely see that argument. So then for something like whitetails that a lot of guys are going after, and clearly you don't need a ton of momentum to be able to punch through and kill, I can kind of see both sides of the argument. I can see how on one side you can say, hey, if I hit it where I need to hit it, I can get away with less momentum, shoot a faster arrow, get the job done. Like I can kind of see that argument if it allows you to hit where you need to hit at the ranges that you intend on hunting. But on the flip side, I can also definitely see the argument that, hey, if I get a little bit more, moment more momentum, heavier arrow, that's gonna give me a little bit of extra security if I'm always aiming for that golden triangle, aiming for a heart shot, top of the heart, both lungs, and occasionally I hit the shoulders, having that little extra momentum help punch through and make sure I'm getting adequate penetration. Right, like the whitetail I shot last year, one of them anyway, I got a full pass through after going through that front shoulder. And it was nice to have that little extra margin of error that that heavier arrow and that cut on contact broadhead gave me. So ultimately, like I said at the beginning of the clip, I don't wanna try and tell you guys what to shoot. I just wanted to kind of present the data and just kind of let you guys decide for yourself what's the best for your scenario based on, you know, the amount of energy you're storing in your bow, what you're going after and what your shot distances are. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to try and answer them. And thanks for watching.